Our strong female leaders this month are the executive director and organizing program manager of the Lilith Fund for Reproductive Equity, which funds abortion and advocates for change through the movement for reproductive justice. Please welcome the wonderful Amanda Williams and Erica Galindo. <laughs> So much for joining me. I'm sure you're busy. Yeah. <laughs> we can cuss on that. Was show, a, right? That was a cut to the congressman. <laughs> you can cuss a fuck ton. Um, <laughs> what inspired you to work for Lilith Fund? Um, for me, I had donated to a couple of Lilith Fund things, including the taco or beer challenge. Mm -hmm. And anything that, like, you know, this is taco or beer abortion, I'm there. <laughs> um, and then. I also went to a fuck Ted Cruz party, um, and it kind of just really aligned with a lot of the work that I have done in my organizing trajectory. And so um, I saw an opening, and I was like, hell yeah. Then I kept going along in the interviewing process, and I, it was pretty shocking. But yeah, it was. It, I really just wanted to work with an org that saw compassion as like a forefront of like, oh, everybody deserves health care, including abortion care. And so. That was a real sell point for me. <laughs> and you've been executive director for several years now, right? Three years. Mm -hmm. um, and so I actually started as a hotline volunteer. Mm -hmm. um, but I found out about Lilith Fund because I was Googling when I needed an abortion, like most people do when they need an abortion. You're just kind of like, abortion, help me. Where do I go? I was really young. I was 19 years old. I was in college. Um, and I remember seeing Lilith Fund as like an, op like an option for me for support, resources. Um, Luckily, I was able to put the money together, and I think that's such a part of the journey that people don't always think about is, like, it's expensive, and the, mm -hmm. the logistical barriers really add up to dollar signs, and uh, it can be really un inaccessible. So um, once I, you know, realized that after my abortion, this was, like, something I was going to dedicate the rest of my life to, when I heard about Lilith Fund again, I was like, that's, that's an in. Like, I want to be a part of it. I want to do whatever I can to make sure whoever else and my universe needs an abortion, I can do something mm -hmm. so that they don't feel so lost and alone yeah. like I did. Um, yeah. So I joined the hotline volunteer group and then joined the board, took a mm -hmm. break from that and then became ED. That's amazing. Um, can you talk to us about how Lilith Fund is fighting back against the recent anti-choice legislation um, in the most recent uh, Texas legislative mm -hmm. session? Yeah. The fun stuff, you know, yeah. the sexy stuff, guys. <laughs> this is the heavy part. <laughs> um, yeah, we were really present at the Capitol. It's almost mm -hmm. like we just, we don't really have a choice, you know. Yeah. Um, What's that like? Yeah. A choice. It, it, it fucking sucks. Yeah. yeah. Um, I mean, we're, we're in survival mode right now, mm -hmm. you know. Like, uh, it's really clear, like, across the South, right, there's this trend of attacks, and it's no coincidence that the South is where, like, we have the highest concentration of people of color, low-income people, immigrants. Mm -hmm. It's very strategic, right? Like, this is a very strategic trend. Mm -hmm. It's very trendy. And yeah. people also don't realize, like, Texas has actually been leading this for years. Yeah. We really kind of, like, wipe in the sweat off our brow with, like, no, like, six-week ban. Thank God. They actually tried it. Yeah, the fetal heartbeat bill mm -hmm. started in Texas, right? Absolutely. Yeah. And there was also a bill um, that would have criminalized anyone yeah. who, you know, the, the tried doctor. to self-manage an mm -hmm. abortion or... Um, and so, well, we're such trendsetters. I love it. It's, yeah. I hate it. It's awful. <laughs> yeah. Um, so we were we were really doing our best this session, and um, you know we're always playing defense, mm -hmm. which is really really tough because it's really hard to dream mm -hmm. and to, to envision the world that we all deserve, that our communities deserve to thrive in and survive mm -hmm. in. And um, Erica did a lot of work on a really proactive, cool bill called Rosie's Law. Mm -hmm. Yeah, um, we teamed up with uh, the Frontera Fund, which is the abortion fund. Mm -hmm that is in the Rio Grande Valley, and then T Fund, the Texas Equal Access Fund in Dallas, and we introduced HB 895, known as Rosie's Law, um, named after Rosie Jimenez, who is from the same region that I come from, uh, the McAllen, or the Rio Grande Valley, and she basically was the first victim of the Hyde Amendment. Um, so basically, a amendment was passed that said no federal money could go to abortion, and since she was on Medicaid, she could no longer afford the abortion she needed, so she went to a um, midwife and got what is known as a back alley abortion, and she ended up dying. And she left a six-year-old behind. This was in the 70s. She was like six months away from finishing school. So we introduced Rosie's Law, named after her. 
And Cheryl Cole here of Austin was the person who introduced that and it got all the way to the um, uh, Human Services Committee, but it died. And we tried our best to get people to make calls to get uh, the Chairman Frank, the chair of the committee, to give it a hearing, but of course he didn't. And it's really telling that 895 was the number of the bill, 896 was a bill that criminalized women, um, and that bill did get a hearing. And so that was what's given priority in the Texas Ledge. 895 wasn't, so. And I'm not here to tell anyone who to vote for, but I'll just say that Joe Biden likes the Hyde Amendment. Just a coincidence. <laughs> Um, so, what are the biggest misconceptions about reproductive health care access in Texas? Mm -hmm. I mean, well, first of all, there's a state mandated um, booklet that's mm -hmm. given to everyone, every patient that goes in to get an abortion procedure. And you'll notice, like, Eric and I tend to use, like, the word patient or Texan or person. And we also, like, we're an organization that very much recognizes trans men have abortions, gender nonconforming people have abortions, non-binary folks have abortions. So we just wanted to give that little asterisk there. Um, but when people go in to get their abortion procedure, they're uh, mandated to receive this Woman's Right to Know Act uh, booklet. And it's riddled with um, non-scientific based um, information, information. And um, there's actually a link uh, that's been debunked time and time again by ACOG and others um, that links breast cancer yeah. to abortion. So I feel like that's like obviously one misconception we need to lift up. That's like it's a it's a mandated law, mm -hmm. right? That it's a it's a lie. Yeah. Like our legislatures are turning lies into laws, mm -hmm. um, and it's all to stigmatize and shame people accessing abortion care and providers because providers are the ones who have to literally read these things. Yeah. And and I have you know. We have friends who are providers and they will literally say like, I'm gonna recite this to you because I have to, but please note, this is not in my medical judgment. This is not the best advice that I'm here to give you. I just have to read this to you. Mm -hmm. And so when, when doctors are forced to go against their own medical judgment and straight up lie yeah. because of the agenda of the state legislature, we have some huge problems. Yeah. And how can we talk about improving healthcare if this is our baseline, right? Yeah. Um, so that's that's one, but there are there are several that mm -hmm. I, we could talk all night about. Yeah, <laughs> unfortunately. No, I feel you. It's crazy because it's like doctors shouldn't be the ones lying to us. Lawyers right. should be. Um, <laughs> uh, can, who is a strong female leader in your own life? Ooh. Um, so I have this friend named Jenny. Um, who she's she, here tonight. No, she's yeah. not. <laughs> <laughs> Couldn't afford her. Budget yeah. cuts. <laughs> Couldn't go. She's actually based in Corpus, which is where I went to school. And I started organizing with the Gay Trade Alliance, which is where I met her. Um, she was organizing the socialists, and we were like, hey, what's up? Um, I had some common interests and she basically is the person who like taught me to like sharpen my political um, education and like always defend it and defend it even when it's like uncomfortable for other people um, so it's like pointing out that like Joe, Joe Biden is a terrible um, candidate because he can't even say that like people need abortion abortion is like a universal need that people need um, and she also like you know just kind of taught me to like be um, really like kind with myself when it comes to like um, learning that like there's time to grow. She also let me like kind of experiment in my like organizing. She taught me how to do like really good wing liner. It's just like the <laughs> whole multifaceted woman. Yeah, for sure. <laughs> That's amazing. Yeah. Amanda, who is your strong female leader? It's really cliche, but my mom. Yeah. Um, my mom is an immigrant from Mexico and like just taught me so much about life and um, and what living means and just I don't think I would be doing the work that I did you know she kind of instilled like this very strong like feminist lens uh, and perspective on the on the world that we live in so I owe everything to her that's awesome um, if Governor Greg Abbott was here <laughs> <laughs> what would you say to him Oh God. Besides, he would just like burn, like walking into this like feminist <laughs> heap. How dare you, sir? Yeah. <laughs> like ask him like, what is, what is your problem? Yeah. <laughs> That's pretty good. What's your damage? That's pretty good. Uh, what do you hope to see for the future of Lilith Fund? Mm. Mm. Um, I would love to see Lilith Fund become obsolete only because 
not because you know abortion becomes illegal, but because um, we have made it so that healthcare is universal and like accessible, and that includes abortion. Mm -hmm. You know, so we become obsolete. It's just like when we like abortion is not seen as a controversial thing, and so that's what I would love to see of Lilith mm -hmm. Fund. I really hope you lose your job. Like, yeah. I really, <laughs> really hope. <laughs> yeah. And that's the future. Um, well, thank you so much for joining us. We have a tradition on our show where we gift the strong female leaders with something from Dollar Tree, not a sponsor. Um, <laughs> you also have some little weird things in here. I had to throw in a Jasmine um, oh, comic great. book because <laughs> it's the only relatable Disney princess to me. Uh, that's one of my posters. <laughs> And uh, I also get these like problematic wine glasses um, at Dollar Tree, and they always have weird sayings, so I just got to read these, because this is really for me more than you guys. Um, this one says, either give me more wine or leave me alone. <laughs> Not great. <laughs> and then this one, let's see, well, I just so much tissue paper. Dollar Tree. Um, rise and wine. Uh-uh. <laughs> no, thank you so much, Amanda.